has been picture perfect weather for three days here in Southern California. Of course, all the stars and the cars and the great shopping down on Rodeo Drive are going to give way as you head a little bit to the east to Auto Club Speedway, where the main star is going to be that team, the 48. Uh, El Cajon native Jimmy Johnson, the hometown favorite here, and they're looking, of course, to win four in a row. Starting grid's going to come across the top of your screen. We already know about Denny Hamlin going to the rear for transmission. Two did not qualify. Mike Bliss and Patrick Carpentier. Let's get the latest from Pit Road. First up is Jamie Little. Well, Marty, it was this race back in February that local boy Kevin Harvick took over the points lead. But, of course, that all went away once the chase began when he was seated third. This team has been trying to get back on top ever since. Well, today could be the day they brought back the same car they won with at Michigan. And, of course, that is the sister track to California. Doc? Well, Jamie, last week, quick thinking by crew chief Dave Rogers wasn't enough to save the race, but it may have been enough to save the chase for Kyle Busch. Quick repairs on pit road allowed the team a respectable 21st place finish, and now Kyle sits back seventh in the standings, but only 80 points back, and his championship hopes are still alive. Vince? The 48 team's dominance here has been well documented. And as another Chase crew chief told me earlier today, we're in their playhouse, and that's impossible to ignore. Jimmy Johnson says he's taking nothing for granted, but he is optimistic. That optimism may be bad news for the rest of the chasers. Dave Burns? Well, Vince, we have a little changing situation here on the 31 pit box today for Jeff Burton. Right now, making the calls on top of the pit box are race engineer Luke Lambert, car owner Richard Childress, and uh, engineer over on on this side, Aaron Johnston. They're up here because Todd Barrier experienced some dizziness during the 10, 15 or so chapel service this morning. Todd was taken to a local area hospital for evaluation. The team just received word that they're on their way back here now. Everything checked out okay. Glad Todd is all right, and he'll be rejoining them here on the pit box, Marty. All right, thanks for the update, Dave. We'll look forward to when Todd gets back to the track. As you take a look at the track facts, if you were with us yesterday for the nationwide race, you know that this surface really played a key role. Yeah, sure did. This is an extremely slick racing surface. Not a lot of grip to be had. You, uh, the tar in the seams makes it difficult to go across. Lack of banking makes it difficult, and they have less downforce with these cars to have their hands full today. Yeah, and the wind speed has changed direction completely today. It's about the same velocity, and it's fairly strong, so it's going to be blowing the cars down into turn three where uh, all weekend it's been blowing the cars really down into turn one so it's going to change it up for them. And as we come down the back stretch, let's take a look at our onboard cameras. We've already talked to Jamie McMurray. He's in the McDonald's Monopoly in Pala. And, of course, Kurt Busch with the Miller Lite Dodge. Denny Hamlin, the FedEx Toyota. Kyle Busch, the M&M's Toyota. Jeff Gordon, the Pepsi Max Chevrolet. Kevin Harvick, the Shell Pennzoil Chevrolet. And Jimmy Johnson, the Lowe's Chevrolet. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. celebrating his 36th birthday today, the Amp Chevrolet on board. All right, you know about uh, Denny Hamlin going to the rear of this field. It has happened five times prior. This is the sixth time he is going to start in the back. If you are a Denny Hamlin fan, you don't want to hear the statistic we're about to roll out for you because when he has come from this far back in the field, his best finish ever, 24th back in July at Daytona. He is going to have to do a lot better than that or his chase hopes are going to take a serious dent today, guys. Yeah, it's going to take a lot more than that. Uh, it looked like yesterday in practice, though, he had a pretty good race car. So uh, I think that they might have brought it. They said they brought their Richmond car here. Maybe it's got downforce, and that'll benefit them here today. Or maybe that's why they've been slow up till now. You yeah. know, they didn't qualify well and then had a little problem with the transmission. But he seemed to be fairly confident that he could work his way back up. Well, the pace lights are out on the pace car, and so that means we'll be going green next time by, as this seems to be a little bit slower than usual. We're usually getting ready to go green by now, as Jimmy Johnson has not swept at the racetrack that we have visited twice this year. He swept most races at least one track in seven of the eight seasons. And, of course, he was the winner here back in February. So, obviously, a chance to keep that string going. Yeah, and watch them today. They are... They I watched them in practice yesterday. I, I wasn't totally confident that they had their race car figured out uh, in a longer run situation. There were other cars that I watched, including his teammate, the 24 of Jeff Gordon, uh, looked to be quite a bit better in a 10 to 12, 15 lap run. You think the Fords are the, got the best shot at uh, taking them down? I think they do. Uh, Matt Kenseth qualified up front. That's uh, you know a good sign for that team. He's great here. His teammate Greg Biffle won last week on the same tire. I think they got you know this new engine combination is working great for him. So this could be. Uh, a really good race for the Roush cars. Well, 
little history. Back on October 10th of 1901, Henry Ford won his first and only race in a car named Sweepstakes on that day. It was just a 10-lap event, but the notoriety led to the Ford Motor Company, people investing, and look where we are today. So maybe it is a Ford day. Get ready now, though, because we've got on the front row, Jamie McMurray, yeah, look Elliot where he's Sadler. Look where he is on the and front he row. has taken the high side. Yes, sir. So he has chosen the outside line. If you were with us yesterday, Kyle Busch was running down low so well, he kept pick picking the inside on all the restarts. Waiting for the pace car to pull down. Here he comes. Listen to the crowd on the flag stand. Waving the flag will be actress Sharon Stone. She'll be giving the green flag. I don't think the guys will be waving to her as she waves to them, though. Here they come down. There she is on the left side of your screen. And the fourth race of the chase is green. Talking about three wide on the pre-race show and countdown. We've already seen it. Matt Kenseth got a great start. He passed Elliott Sadler before they can get down into turn one. Montoya, a nice run on the high side, but Jamie McMurray is able to keep the lead down into three. He may not want to keep the lead going across the stripe because there's a stat that's going to come up. Driver leading lap number one's never gone on to win here at Auto Club Speedway. But it is going to be Jamie leading at lap number one with Juan Pablo Montoya. And then uh, Matt Kenseth, Casey Kane, Elias Sadler, Truex, Johnson, Biffle, Earnhardt, Logano. That's your top ten. Well, Matt Kenseth looking racy early. Kind of uncharacteristic of man. Usually you see him kind of make his way up during the race. And we don't see him start up front no. that much. But God, he's had a great weekend. His car looked really good in practice yesterday. He came up right in front of Montoya coming off turn two, though. And Montoya's going underneath him now and trying to take over that second spot. Yeah, that's the thing about running that bottom side. If you, you run down there, your car's really going to push on the exit of the corner. Sometimes you have to crack that throttle just a little bit. Whoa, Montoya. Here comes Jimmy Johnson. Whoa, he's got to dive to the inside to get underneath Elliott Sadler. Sadler's going in the wrong direction right now. Greg Biffle right behind the 48. That's Martin Truex down low. See what great racing this racetrack provides with it being so wide and you can just run these cars all over. Choose your lane, bottom, top, middle, wherever you want to go. See a lot of debris on the racetrack back there. Yeah, a lot of paper flying around. Don't know the exact reason why. As there you see the top three going through and there's Matt Kenseth trying to take over that second spot again from the 42 of Juan Pablo Montoya. Well, they're fighting like it's the last lap instead of lap three. Well, they have opened up about a second over fourth place, Casey Kane, and now Jimmy Johnson, he's side-by-side side with Kane for that position. Jimmy's got the low line. Will he be able to clear him as he comes out of two? Looks like the answer is going to be yes. So move Johnson up to fourth, Kane fifth, Sadler's now fifth with Biffle in the seventh spot. There's Joey Logano taking a look on the inside of Martin Truex Jr. A little further back, Jeff Burton. He's going underneath Kyle Busch. And the 13 follows with Casey Mears. Kyle, of course, won yesterday's nationwide race, looking for his fifth career weekend sweep, which would give him an all-time record if he could pull it off. You hear us talk about the draft most of the times at Daytona and Talladega, but this is a huge drafting effect that you get at this racetrack. The high speed, you're over 200 miles per hour getting into turn one, so it's something that you can use, kind of a slingshot effect. Straight line all the way that back until you get past uh, Joey Logano as he's got some side-by-side -side action. Let's check in on Denny Hamlin and see how he is doing. He has actually picked up a number of spots. He is up to 28th position. Here he is going underneath Marcus Ambrose and Kurt Busch, who started ahead of him, is now trying to follow him. Well, what's those two cars in practice yesterday? Denny Hamlin's car looked much better than what Kurt Busch had. Denny looked like that his car was really good on longer runs. Might not have had the total speed for the first two or three laps that some other cars had, but as they got laps on the tires, his car looked extremely good. He is our biggest mover so far. He has picked up 15 spots. Sam Hornish Jr., we can tell you, right behind him there, has picked up 11. 
And you can see Kirk Bush really working the steering wheel on his car coming out of turn two. They've, they've just struggled with this race car the entire weekend. Kevin Harvick had three wide for a moment there. He was on the low end. Here he comes up again underneath Ryan Newman. And boy, has Newman been hot the last few races. Battle for eighth, as you can see, with Casey Mears getting a good early run going here for the Geico 13 team. Right behind that group of three, you see David Rudiman in the double zero. David Reagan in the six, and then there is our first look at Carl Edwards behind Reagan. Casey's going underneath the 29, so all of a sudden he has slipped back a little bit, loses a couple of spots. You can see Harvick went a little high. He's trying to get that run off the corner. He's got a huge run now. You can see that draft. He's going to push the 13 by Ryan Newman, who's in the 39. You know, you don't see that dramatic effect of the draft like you see at Talladega, mainly because these engines make about 900 horsepower, make about half of that at uh, Talladega, but it does make a difference. And see Harvick really using it to his advantage. Let's check in on Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kyle Busch as those two are going after the 12th position on the racetrack right now. I bet you Jr. is working the top. Yep. What was your first clue? Well, he, <laughs> he likes it up there. Oh, and, uh, yeah, always this, has. This track here really pays off well if somebody can really get it going up there because you can use that momentum like, like well, right there. <laughs> That's where your spotter comes in handy. Yeah. Saying, he, yeah, he's out there. You have to really be careful as a driver. You're running that bottom side. Your tendency is to need to use up all the racetrack, but you have to be aware that there could be somebody coming in a hurry from that top. David Rudiman's now side by side with the 39 of Ryan Newman. Uh-oh. He said he killed the car. Report is he may have struck the wall. So Juan Pablo Montoya, let's go back and take a look. He said he was trying to arc it in a little bit more, but it's oh man, he's that's yeah. in the middle of the corner. Yeah, the track's so just hard. too dirty right now. You see all that dust up there. I mean, they, they'll probably clean it off later in the race, but it's too dirty to run that high right now. On board with Jamie McMurray. Watch. Oh, he gets sideways right there. Has to chase it up. You know, that's the thing. It does pay off to run up on the top as far as momentum, but it is very risky for that kind of thing right there. You just have no room for error. Well, he's coming off a disappointing 29th finish at Kansas, and you can see he's already dropped back to the fifth position after starting fourth and getting up as high as second here at the Pepsi Max 400 in California.